Wildcat stars Maya Hawk and was uh, released last year, but it's getting its formal release in theaters this year because it did the festival uh, tour last year, right? Directed by Ethan Hawk. Follows the life of writer Flannery O'Connor while she was struggling to publish her first novel. Well, uh, if you don't know who uh, Maya Hawk is, you uh, have to watch Stranger Things and you'd be like, oh, okay, I remember who she is. Um, and this is kind of like a showcase for her to show her talents as an actress and how she's developing. Laura Linney also stars. And I got to tell you, the standout in this film right up off the bat is the performances. Is Maya Hawk playing this uh, writer that's, well, fighting some sickness. Uh, I think it's lupus at the time. But she also wants to write. But she's an abstract writer. She's got really abstract ideas about society and culture and stuff like that. Doesn't always write the most pleasant stories. And I like how it starts off with her kind of envisioning stories in her head. And we get to see that kind of played out with the same kind of characters. Laura Linney is her mother in, in the movie, but then she's also the mother character in all of these little stories that happen uh, throughout the movie. So she sees things that gets inspired, somebody walking with uh, crutches or somebody walking with no arm. And then she writes a story about that kind of thing. Right. And Maya Hawk does a really good job in this. Uh, if you thought that, like, look at her there. Uh, she's the, she is the daughter of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. So I always said from here up, it's, it's Uma Thurman. And then from down here, it's, uh, it's Ethan Hawke. The acting is good. And you can tell that, uh, you know, Ethan Hawke as a director is using his skills to marshal in, to draw in, pull out performances from people. Right. And we get some cameos in here from some fun people, Steve Zahn, Liam Neeson uh, shows up in here, uh, Vin Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, so it's it's a good cast, and it goes over some really difficult subject matter because it's kind of like a period piece, right? And she transforms here. She does. But the thing that I think most people won't like about it is because it's about a writer who does uh, unpleasant stories, and we get to see some of those stories played out. It's about unpleasant subject matter. So it may be slow in the pacing, right? It'll be kind of like, well, why are we going into this sub story again? I'll just follow with the main story, please, with her being sick and how she's dealing with that and her desire to keep on writing. How she just feels like she's got to have this material, material come out of her, right? And I, I like that aspect of the film. But you go and look at some of the marketing for this, and it's kind of like, well, uh, Liam Neeson. See, look how it's billed. There's Liam Neeson before Maya Hawk. No, it's it's a Maya Hawk movie. Watch it for Maya Hawk. And if you want to, if if you're curious to see what she can do, how much of a range does she have? Uh, of course, she's gone. She's going to be mentored by great actors, Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman. But then she's working around with this nice supporting cast in this movie, Laura Linney, uh, and as I said, Steve Zahn. And I do believe the best movie, the best scene in the movie is with uh, Liam Neeson, where he plays like priest and comes to her for a kind of like a confession. And she just pours her heart out very much like that scene in Pearl, <laughs> except not as crazy, right? Remember that dinner scene or where she invites her friend over in Pearl and she just kind of just her mind just starts to flow out of her mouth. It's a scene like that, but for Maya Hawk in this movie. And for that, I would say, give it thumbs up, go see it for the acting, go uh, the, the pacing and the subject matter is drab. And that's where most people will be like, I don't know if this is for me. Okay. So with that being said, let's go over to my preliminary score sheet. And start to fill in some numbers here. Acting, directing a story out of a possible one point each, two points each, sorry. And uh, cinematography and score are out of a possible one point. I will give the acting a full two points because Maya Hawk is good. But then the supporting cast around her, as I said, when they go into those small little stories, uh, the sub stories, 
where Laura Linney's playing like different characters and stuff like that. That's cool. And it was fun with these small little cameos in there too that are also very solid. Uh, Ethan Hawke is a director. I would give 1.5 because there is some pacing issues in here. There is, without a doubt. Story is drab. I'll give 1.5. And it's not going to be for everybody. This is And this is where the, the watchability factor is going to kind of wane off. The cinematography was serviceable. Score was meh. Serviceable. So we're sitting at a 6 out of 10 right now for Wildcat. Let's go over to the tomato meter and see what people are saying about it. Because this came out a while ago, right? And then it's just ending its run now in uh, a lot of the art house theaters. 56% by critics, 69 by the audience, only 50 view ratings so far. Yeah, so uh, let's just see what people are saying. Richard Roper liked it. Uh, with pinpoint production design, makeup, and wardrobe capturing the 1950s time period, exquisite cinematography, and brilliant work by talented actors who get to sink their teeth into some meaty roles, Wildcat is an inventive and haunting mood piece. Well, I do agree about the sinking your teeth into some meaty roles. Like, as I said, there's some side stories and there's some scenes in there with, like, Liam Neeson and stuff where people actually get to stretch themselves. Laura Linney does a good job in learning to come to terms with some of her prejudices, I would say, in this, of her character's prejudices which I thought played very well. Want a shiny penny? If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And her reaction to that, uh, I thought was... Mwah. Okay. Some audience reviews. Collections of shorts goes nowhere, but I guess that's the point of a collection of shorts. They're all their own unique story. The main story of the author writing the short stories does not add much, but acting is good. Yeah, because those short stories do come in there, that it does feel fragmented. That's a good word to use. Fragmented. Uh, let's take a look at somebody who didn't like it from uh, critics. Uh, Washington City Paper. Wildcat never coheres into something compelling or specific. Instead, it drifts in like a reader who reminds the same passage of a dozen times and still cannot make any sense of it. But I think that was some of the point. See if there's anybody else here that jumps on the page that I may recognize. Epoch Times. Chicago Reader. Despite a strong cast, this Flannery O'Connor biopic doesn't capture the prose of its subject. Christy Lemire. It fights off... It fights off fancy of are wildly over the top. Its flights of fancy are wildly over the top with gifted actors offering their versatility in the service of obnoxious eccentric eccentric caricatures. Does that mean anything to you guys? Yeah, it doesn't really that much to me. Just trying to see if there's anybody in here that jumps off the page at me uh, critic-wise. Anybody that I trust... Christy Lemire is probably the closest. Yeah, nobody else really that much. But do you guys get the impression here? It's it's an art house film. I wouldn't say that it's audience friendly either because of the subject matter. But I am glad that I finished watching it. I'm glad that I did watch it uh, because I am interested in seeing what Maya Hawk can do. And she does get to stretch and push herself in this. So for that fact, I would say go and check out Wildcat. But it's nothing that you need to rush out to the theater or out art house theater to see. Wait for it on streaming and go. Oh, okay. And you'll be you'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm glad that I watched it, but you might you might need the fast forward button at some times. All right, so let's wrap up my score sheet and see where I sit for my final score on uh, Wildcat. Watchability factor. It's out of a possible two points. I would say check it out for Maya Hawk if you're interested and check it out for the uh, premise of the movie. But other than that, I'm uh, 7 out of 10 is actually fairly gracious. I could probably knock it down for directing. Maybe the story as well. 
a mountain, but no, 6.5 seems a little bit unjust. Seven seems about right for Wildcat. It's it's there. I'm glad that I saw it, and it's uh, it's a good it's a good start for Maya Hawk uh, as a leading person in a movie. It's a good foundation. I'm glad she made this movie, and I'm glad that I saw it. So there you go. What do you think? Let me know if you saw this movie Wildcat. And we will talk about it in the comments below. You're watching Mirror Domains. If you like this kind of stuff, come join us here on the Mirror Domains uh, channel. And uh, you'll get stuff like things for the full live movie uh, series watch-alongs for House of the Dragon. And, uh, whoa. <laughs> the, uh, the Acolyte. Smile 2 trailer reactions. Alien Romulus. Full movie reactions for Godzilla Minus One, Under Paris, Atlas, <laughs> The Watchers movie reviews, and uh, full series watch-alongs for, like, Fallout. Cool, guys. Let me know what you think right here on Mirror Domains. All right. So, 